We're going to switch gears here, and the next speaker is, has been with the Federation for Americans uh, for Immigration Reform. It is a uh, public policy organization. They've been around for about 30 years. Uh, and they're really committed, and she's really committed, to um, an immigration re a reform policy, a federal reform policy, that policies that should benefit America, but, but just as important, benefit Americans. Her name is Susan Tully. Susan, come on up. Would you welcome her? Good to see you. Thank you. you bet. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. FAIR has been around for 30 years. Uh, we're based in Washington, D.C. I'm the National Field Director, and I get the opportunity to travel around the country and speak to people just like you about the immigration issue. Now, I've been in it for 20 years. Before it was an issue here in Nebraska, I was in law enforcement in the state of California. So I came to this because of the job that I did. But FAIR has testified before Congress on immigration bills more than any other organization in the United States. We're a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization. And we do believe that America's immigration policy should first and foremost benefit America. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to tell you, we have a country who, that is in crisis. That's why you're here today. You're not out roasting hamburgers and hot dogs and you know driving the boat on the lake and doing all those things because you're concerned. I'm concerned. And we're here together because we have to find ways to address our issues. Unfortunately, we lack the leadership that we should have on these issues. Illegal immigration specifically has been a problem for this country for 30 years, actually more than 30 years. We did the amnesty in 1986. What is Washington's answer today to illegal immigration? The DREAM Act, amnesty. Let's just wave that magic wand and it'll go away. But folks, that's not the answer. It just simply isn't. Now, I just want to give you a few legal immigration facts. We need to start out with this because legal immigration for our organization is also a concern, and I'm going to tell you why. Do you, you've heard the other side, the people who like to call us racist, isolationist, protectionist, nationalist, anything that ends with an IST. I've been called that for 20 years. But the truth is, the United States, and you've heard them say, well, the immigration policy in the United States, the immigration system is broken. We have to come into the country illegally because it just takes too long. And we simply can't get through the system. The United States brings in more legal immigrants each and every year than the whole rest of the world combined. The United States brings in 75% of the entire world's refugee population. Now that's not a system that's broken. If we can bring in that many people, more than the whole rest of the world combined, that's a system that's incredible. It may be overwhelmed, and I'd be the first one to step up and say I think that it is. And the reason I think that it is is because of our very generous immigration policy legally, we are now growing at a faster rate in population than China. It is our migration rate that's driving that population. And we are on a fast track, folks, to hit one billion people by the end of this decade. This century, I'm sorry. By 2100, we will be at a billion. And I want you to think of what we're leaving for our grandchildren and their children. Because one billion people is where China was when they decided to institute forced abortion, one child per family. And it, again, it is not our population birth rate here in the United States that's driving it. It is our migration rate. Where is the resource coming from? Where is the water coming from? Where are the jobs? How will we ever get a whole ahead of the energy crisis if we continue to bring in the millions and millions of people? Now let's shift gears and go to illegal immigration. On top of this very generous legal immigration policy that we have, 
We have millions of people, we don't even know how many, that are here and come and go in this country because our borders are wide open. Millions of people, they estimate it's somewhere between 11 and 13 million, but others will tell you it could easily be 20 or 30 million people in this country. I can tell you 20 years ago when I started in this issue, it was a huge issue for the state of California where I was in law enforcement. Probably in Nebraska, you didn't have too many issues. Today, you do. Today in Nebraska, Nebraska taxpayers are spending $261.7 million each and every year. I have a few people who are walking around with a cost study that we've done. It looks like this. Feel free to take a copy of it. But just K through 12 education, which is your highest cost that you're spending in Nebraska, is $126 million each and every year. What else could you be doing with $126 million in your K through 12 if you didn't have to spend it on illegal immigration? English is a second language alone in your state annually, $25.3 million. University, because you're one of the few states who in their infinite wisdom, your legislator decided that K through 12 wasn't enough, we needed to give in-state tuition to illegal aliens as well. Something we've been trying to get reversed here. Something you need to work on getting reversed here. Medicaid. To illegal aliens, 24.8 million. The justice system, remember the people who simply come here because they want a better life? They want to do jobs that Americans won't do? The justice system here in Nebraska, you're spending $26.4 million every year to incarcerate illegal aliens, people who should be deported. So total, your costs are 261 million we have given them uh, illegal population here the credit of $10 million for taxes, sales tax, so that they do pay when they're buying and purchasing just like you do. But you still are subsidizing this cheap labor in Nebraska to the tune of $252 million a year. That's a lot of money. I don't know what your deficit here is in your state. I don't know what other things you could be doing with the $252 million each and every year, but I'm guessing that it could be a lot more. You are picking up the benefits program for cheap labor. You know, I tell people it's time to act. It's absolutely time to act. And if you don't, if these costs aren't enough, let me share with you what you have to look forward to, because 20 years ago, you didn't have the problem in Nebraska that you have now. And right now, you're not experiencing what I'm about to tell you. But there are other parts in this country that are. I was just on the border in El Paso, Texas, three weeks ago, one week after President Obama was there, when he stood up and he said, the border is secure. And the GOP will not be happy until we have alligators in the moat. Do you remember that comment? If he had gotten off that podium and gone with me two miles south of where he was standing, he would see that the border is wide open. I did a 60-mile tour with the sheriff of Husbeth County, a man who's got seven deputies to cover a county that is 100 by 100 miles. That's a 24-hour shift, seven days a week. And there are times when he has a deputy on the northeast and another one on the southwest, and it's gonna be more than an hour, code three, 100 miles an hour, before help can be to the people in his county. So he told them, arm yourselves. He took heat from the Obama administration for telling his people to arm themselves. There is now a section along the southern border in Texas below El Paso, where it is now secure, that is called Almost America. Border Patrol has been pulled back to the I-10. That leaves a five-mile section between the actual border 
and where Border Patrol is. Americans who live in almost America are on their own. They have no help. So Arvin West of Hudspeth County and his 17 deputies are absolutely dedicated to helping his people. And he is willing to do the job the federal government's not willing to do. But he's taking heat. Now, let me tell you something Obama didn't tell you. The businesses of El Paso, Texas are now paying protection money to the drug cartels. They're having to. The border is not secure. They are threatened each and every day. I went into Juarez. I went in with Rusty Fleming, who's a documentary, a documentary filmmaker who did gangland and drug wars for the History Channel. And on the streets of Juarez, right now today, patrolling our Humvees, pickup trucks with Mexican military, full armor, eyes and face completely covered so you can't see who they are because their lives are on the line. But they're trying to protect the people of Juarez. Because ladies and gentlemen, while we're in Afghanistan, protecting the borders of Afghanistan, where 20,000 people have died since we've been there, in Juarez, where Obama says the border's secure, 40,000 people have died, twice that of Afghanistan. The drug cartels, the drug dealers, the criminals have infiltrated every part of life in Mexico. They are in the United States. They use MS-13. They use the drug and gang members who are right here in Omaha as part of their operation. They have tentacles that reach all the way into Asia. Our border is not secure. These people are coming, and they're coming quickly. And they have more money and more weaponry than any police department in the United States. Some of what they have would be equivalent to what the United States military has. They have satellites. They have phenomenal amount of money, billions and billions. In Juarez, I met with a girl who was 17 years old who was kidnapped when she was 11. She was put in charge of taking care of other children in Juarez who had been kidnapped. They were waiting to be sold to families around the world who wanted children. In Juarez and other parts of Mexico are houses that hold adults who have been kidnapped who are being held and they're waiting to have their organs harvested and sold. There is sex trafficking all around the world and human trafficking right now in the United States is one of the biggest things that we are dealing with and yet you don't hear this. But ladies and gentlemen, the truth is we cannot look the other way on illegal immigration. We cannot say it's okay to have Jose, who mows the lawn, and Maria, who cleans our house, without understanding that you're looking the other way on all the illegal trafficking, sex trafficking, drug trafficking, organ harvesting, because it goes hand in hand. If we can't stop Maria and Jose from coming here, we aren't stopping the drug cartels either. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get up to help us to fight this issue. While you may not be dealing with having your businesses having to pay protection money, let me remind you that 20 years ago you weren't facing the issues you're facing today, but it's coming. And as long as we continue to watch Washington do nothing, except propose to do the same thing they've done over and over again, which is wave the magic wand tonight, get rid of all of the illegal people because we legalize them, and tomorrow morning we have 10,000 new illegal aliens, the next day we have 10,000 more, and in 20 years we're back to millions and millions again. This is what you have to look forward to if you won't stand with us and fight back and say enough is enough. 
We need to do this at the local level. There are things that you can do. I've been working with some people here. I will work, continue to work with you. We can pass E-Verify in the city of Omaha. All of your city contracts, all of the people who work on those projects should be required to use E-Verify and make sure that every person working on a taxpayer project has a legal presence and right to work in the United States. We can work on local legislation. You have a sanctuary city. For God's sakes, you, you could have the head of the drug cartels in Omaha stop tonight in a, in a regular routine traffic stop, and your police department will not check his legal presence because of a sanctuary policy that you have in place. You need to get rid of that. If you're seeing increased crime and drug trafficking and other things happening in your city, this is part of the reason why. Do you think they want to go to Omaha where nobody's going to question their immigration status and find out that maybe they're drug dealers? Or would they rather go to another city where they check everybody they stop routinely? They're going to go to the cities where life is easiest, and yours is one of them. E-Verify at the state level. We've seen it pass now. In Arizona, the Supreme Court just upheld a Supreme Court case that said states have the right to use E-Verify. You need to do it. You need to do it in Nebraska because Washington's not going to do it. It matters to you. So we need to work on state legislation and push back on all of these issues. You need to restore voter in integrity here in Nebraska. I have heard that you have organizations that are registering anybody without proof of citizenship to vote. I personally led a voter sting operation in Wisconsin. I brought in a person from Michigan who was an FBI certified Spanish speaker and his wife, who was a legal immigrant but not a citizen of the United States, neither one of them from Wisconsin, and took them to an organization called Voces de la Frontera and had them register to vote in Racine, Wisconsin, and then again at their office in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. When we turned our entire investigation over to the U.S. Attorney General's office and to the FBI, they sent this, our report down to the DA level in those two counties. And the DA of Milwaukee said, I may not arrest Susan Tully from FAIR, who conducted an illegal sting operation. Absolutely nothing happened to the organization who was registering people to vote who don't have a right to vote. You need to find out if you have people in your system and who are being registered to vote because it makes a difference come election time. And that was one of the things we learned in the 2004 and the 2008 election that some states were as close as seven or 800 votes and a few hundred people registered to vote who don't have a right makes a difference and makes a decision for you. So ladies and gentlemen, pull together, continue to have these events Continue to do what you're doing. Have your friends, family, neighbors, and others join you in this effort. Help us at FAIR. We'd love to have you join our organization. $25 a year, you can be a member. Help us fight this back at every step of the way. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much for your time. And please, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Susan. We really appreciate you taking time to come to Nebraska to, uh, for this weekend and for this event. Thank you very much.